Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say much. I think everybody else uh, far better at this than me. Uh, I am just here to support the President of the United States. The President of the United States is, you know, our boss. Chris Rock says the President is our boss. The President is our boss? I don't remember Chris Rock striving for the Employee of the Month award while Bush was President. I think what's happened. And the brilliance didn't stop there. Oh, no. Tony Bennett took us to school with this statement. I'd like the assault, we assault weapons to go to war, not in our own country. And I'd like assault weapons eliminated. Thank you. Hey, dig the look on Chris Rock's face. That look is a manifestation coming deep from what's left of his soul. And somewhere deep down, He's got to know that this junk he's going along with is stupid. But y'all, take heart. Celebrities are dependent on this mindset. They have to take positions like this to show that they care. They have to look like they're still down to earth and that they still care about people. They want their sponsors and their fans patronage. They have to keep that image. But to the people they patronize, many of them aren't dependent on maintaining such an image. So when you tell them really simple things like, Banning guns or putting more restrictions on them will not stop criminals from getting guns because the very nature of a criminal is to do unlawful things. They're not as apt to resist that logic. They don't have to save face and have to concede in the public eye. They don't have that big celebrity ego to shatter. A lot of people aren't hardwired liberal, but they're always exposed to the influence of hardwired liberals. Now, y'all, as I've said before, to be a liberal includes taking gross liberties with the Constitution. When you're liberal with your interpretation of the Constitution, you end up reading things like the Second Amendment like this. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. To a liberal, they interpret well-regulated in terms of how much regulations there should be placed. They see the word well in terms of amount, like well-funded, well-equipped, well-endowed. So a liberal interprets well-regulated militia as how much oversight the government will have over the militia and the individual's right to defend themselves. So for them, well-regulated means more regulations, more laws, etc. But when you're conservative with your interpretation of the Constitution, you read well-regulated in terms of quality not quantity. A well-regulated militia means that you abide by the supreme law of the land, and you don't need a well-endowed amount of laws for that. All you need to regulate the militia is the respect for the God-given rights. Nobody can be deprived of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, or property without due process. If you respect that law and respect life, it won't matter if you have a bazooka in your possession. You're not going to use it to commit murder. I reckon that's the key to the mystery of a well-regulated militia. See, a conservative knows that it doesn't make sense for a militia to be regulated by the very faction that could subjugate them. Hello? And you liberals can yammer all you want about where that comma is placed. The consent of the governed, Chris Rock. The president is not our boss. Does the president pay my or your salary? No. We pay his. Did the president hire me or you? No. And can he hire me or fire you? No. But the people, unfortunately, did hire him and could fire him, but unfortunately won't. The president is chosen to represent us, not dictate us. Liberals are under the sick impression that more laws are what it takes to make a good society. Law doesn't make good society at all. The society itself has to be willing to obey good law. Legislators and law enforcement are not social workers. Good law protects life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and property. And good law protects the society's right to protect these things themselves and acts as the enforcer to help make sure their God-given rights are protected should a faction try to infringe upon them. Bad law protects persons who want to have their desires at the force expense of others. And we're plagued with bad laws. For more insight into what I mean by that, please grab a copy of my audiobook, Weapon of Ass Destruction, available at alfonsorachel.com. 
I'm Alfonso Rachel with Zoe Nation, and Tony Bennett cracks me up. He says, make drugs legal, but ban guns. So when a person gets strung out on this new level of availability to drugs and has to resort to crime to feed his habit, it's going to suck not having guns for protection from people like this. But Tony thinks that the doctors who will be in charge will just cut the addict off, which means that the drug addict is just going to go back to the black market that the liberals and libertarians say will be done away with. And while they're at it, they'll just get hold of one of those illegal guns they're not supposed to have, too. Why? Because they don't care about themselves, they don't care about others, and they don't care about your laws. And you don't teach that with law. Those lessons begin with the nuclear family that you liberal Democrats have worked to ruin. He's got to know that this junk he's going along with is stupid.